Welcome back to the Beach Bum Bookworm. I am Tiffany. I'm glad y'all found me again today. My channel is all about cozy mystery books and romance. And it's the end of the month, and that means we are looking at the new books coming out in April. And this video is all about the cozy mysteries that are being released. And there are some good ones. Let me know which of these that you're excited about, which of these that you read. Anything else? Down there is a the place to do it. On your way down to leave that comment, don't forget to stop. Hit the subscription and the notification bell because that's going to tell you when I put out new videos each and every single week. All right, let's get right into it. April 2021, Cozy Mystery releases in three, two, one, go! As you know by now, I never jump right into the video. This is the place I do my announcements and I do just have a few, I'll be very quick. The first one on a sad note, Beverly Cleary passed away a couple days ago and I wanted to just acknowledge it because man did she bring a lot of joy and reading into my young adult years. Uh, I loved Ramona and she will be very missed. <sighs> on a brighter note, Miss Cozy Reads and I, who, if you haven't checked out her channel, you need to. She talks all about cozy mystery books, have been doing um, collaborations on numerous different things and just a few quick announcements. I've announced it in the past videos, but just in case you're joining me for the first time today, I'll be very, very quick. We started a book club. The first book will be in April. It is A Dark and Stormy Murder by Miss Julia Buckley. It'll be right here. We are going to discuss this book the last Saturday in April. That's April 24th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Any other questions, always feel free to ask me in the comments. The other announcement that we made um, just this past week is we're going to do something really fun in the next few months um, continuously. It is called the Cozy Mystery Knockout Challenge. And um, it's kind of a play off of the March basketball tournament. So we're gonna have brackets. This month we are reading two, in April this month, we are reading two culinary mysteries. It is, the first one is going to be Cobblered to Death, <laughs> Rosemary wrote. Rosemary Ross, I apologize. The cover is right here. It will go head to head. I feel like I need the Rocky song. Okay, anyway, sorry, it played in my head for a second. It will go head to head against Penny Dreadful by Miss Catherine Bruns. It's going to be right here on the third Saturday in April at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to be chatting these up kind of giving our opinions. We want all of you guys to read along with us and share your opinions, and then we're all going to vote. That book, the winner of that knockout, will go head-to-head -head against our next category that we're going to be announcing in May. We've already announced the category. It'll be books, but we haven't announced the books. And then those will go head-to-head. -head. All for fun, but we would love you to join in. All right, now I promise I'm diving into cozy mystery releases. Let's get right into it. The first one is one that I'm super excited about because I love this series and author. It is book number seven in the Book Retreat Mystery Series by Miss Ellery Adams. The book is called Murder in the Cook Book Nook. Woo! Say that five times fast. Maybe you can, but I couldn't. <laughs> the cover is going to be right here. The main character is Jane. She is the manager of the Storyton Hall Book Resort. This takes place in Virginia. If you have not checked out these books, you need to. They are like a book lover's dream. That's that's how I could explain it. It's like Storyton Hall is this book getaway, and there's always these always these literary functions going on, and there's like libraries and secret passages and uh, I don't know it just reminds me I don't know what it reminds me of but I want to visit that's that's all I can say seriously it's a book lover's dream so in this book it says Virginia is for lovers and Storyton Hall is the best vacation spot for lovers of books exactly the big event this summer at Jane Stewart's resort is a bookish cook-off it's a blend of the literary and the culinary but someone's headed for the mortuary <laughs> <laughs> Six chefs are preparing to compete in an outdoor tent at Storyton Hall for prizes that will boost their careers, but there is someone who can't stand the heat. It looks that way when one of the contestants is found dead in the pantry, packed with two centuries worth of cookbooks, among other treasures. 
and rarities. Could there be a connection to the other recent events in town, like tampering with the costumes at a of a local mascot? Jainism for sure. But after someone serves a second course of murder, the kitchen must be closed and the killer must be found. I cannot recommend that series enough. The characters in it are amazing. Everything about it is amazing. Another book I'm really excited for, although I'm not caught up in the series, and now that I have um, purchased a library card through a uh, library in my area, well, in my state, but not my area, so I have my local library that that I obviously get the, the card for, um, for just being a resident, but I bought a non-resident pass to a bigger library in my state that has granted me access to a ton of new books, which I'm really excited about because that means I can start reading my cozies in order again. Oh my gosh. You have no idea how excited I am about that. If you have any questions or um, are interested in purchasing like the non-resident library card, I don't think that you have to be a uh, resident of the state of Florida because there was a drop down menu that, that allowed to pick a different state. And I'm not anywhere close to this county. I bought in Miami-Dade County because it's one of the biggest counties in Florida and I knew they would have a big library system. I'm several hours away. So let me know because it was the best deal ever. Um, it was $65 a year, which comes out to about $5 a month, which is cheaper than any other service you could ever, that I know of like audible. And those are all great too. But just if you're interested, let me know. I have all the details. So this one, I've read the first two in the fifth book is coming out. So I might try to binge these because I loved it. It is the, I love this name. Perfectly Proper Paranormal Museum Mystery Series. This is by Kirsten Weiss. Weiss. I'm not sure how she pronounces her name. She also writes the Pie Town Shop Mysteries. So in this one, the main character is Maddie. She is the manager of a local paranormal museum. Oh my gosh, so much fun. The fifth book is going to be called Damsel in a Dress. <laughs> it's right here. It says, Bridesmaid's duties can be deadly. Oh my gosh. I don't I. They can definitely be cutthroat. I mean, I'm sure they can be deadly too. I've never been a part of that, but they can be cutthroat. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm still waking up and I need coffee. Maddie, I'm not sure how she says her last name, Kozlowski, has more than wedding cake on her plate. She's managing her paranormal museum, helping her best friend Adele with wedding plans, and trying to prove that Adele's vintage wedding dress is most definitely not haunted. But when a bridesmaid turns up murdered, Maddie has to solve the crime to save the wedding. As her bouquet of suspects grows and everyone's alibis have the ring of truth, Maddie begins to doubt this wedding will go off without a hitch. If you love a laugh out loud mystery, witty heroine, and a touch of paranormal, you'll love Damsel in a Dress, and I agree with that. I'm not a huge paranormal fan. If you watch any of my videos of the lives, I and Cozy Row have now started referring to it as, I like a sprinkle. I like a sprinkle, but anything more than, than you know, when it starts um a downpour, it's not for me. This one, I think, is the perfect amount for me. I will say, if you're really into paranormal, you might feel like this doesn't have enough because I feel like it's very subtle, which, again, for me, is absolutely perfect. I'm very excited about this release. The next one is book number six in a bread shop mystery series by Winnie Archer. I have not read any of these, but they've been on my TBR, and I love the covers. Book number six is called Death Gone Awry. That's the other thing. These titles in this specific series, although, I mean, all cozy titles usually are very punny and great. I feel like these are always spectacular, this, this bread shop series. So the main character is um, Ivy. She is a photographer who currently works in Yeast of Eden. <laughs> it's a bread shop in a seaside town of Santa Sofia, California. It says, Vincent Van Doe... <laughs> Fascia is being touted on Instagram as the best thing since sliced bread. But strategically placing chives, olives, and yellow peppers to look like poppies and sunflowers, bakers create a mouthwatering masterpiece in the style of the great post-impressionist painter. 
At Yeast of Eden, where bread making has always been an art, they're baking their own version for the school's district, Spring Fling. But one person won't be tasting the Mexican bakery's latest specialty. Ambitious school board president, Nessa, has been murdered. Like the rest of this close-knit community, Ivy is shocked. But she's just as surprised to discover her beau, restauranteur Miguel, has his, had his own fling with Nessa back in the day, and now the police have this half-baked notion he might have killed her. It's up to Ivy, her boss, Alea, and 86 years young Penelope Branford to separate the wheat from the chaff to determine who the real culprit is. Oh my gosh. It sounds like there's a senior citizen in this. I, it was already on my TVR, but I don't know if Penelope is an ongoing sidekick, but I'm so excited about this series. So the next one is the sixth book in the Scottish Bookshop series by Paige Shelton. I have not read any of these. The sixth book is going to be called Deadly Editions. It's right here. The main character is Delaney. It says she is relocated to Scotland from Kansas. She is an employee of a rare book manuscript shop in Edinburgh. It's a quiet, snowy morning at the Cracked Spine Bookshop. Love the name. When bookseller Delaney receives a mysterious visitor... A messenger. He presents her with a perplexing note, an invitation to a meeting with his centric socialite, Shayla. I hope I'm not saying the name right. I apologize if I said it wrong. Shayla O'Connor, who requ requests Delaney's participation in an exclusive treasure hunt. Oh my gosh. Delaney is intrigued. So am I. But also cautious. Shayla while charming in person, has a reputation for her hijinks as a wealthy young woman in the 70s. She was even suspected of murder of her former boyfriend, though un ultimately cleared of all charges. But Delaney is enticed by the grand prize at the end of the treasure hunt, a highly valuable first edition copy of the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The winner is also to receive the contents of Shayla's vast library, and all participants will earn a large sum of cash. The night after the first meeting of the treasure hunters, however, several homes in Edinburgh are robbed in a manner reminiscent of Shayla's old tricks. And when a man connected to Shayla is killed, suspicion builds. Except Shayla herself has disappeared from her home, seemingly kidnapped by the victim. Tear mounts throughout the city as Delaney attempts to solve the mystery while trying to evade the killer's clutches. Oh my gosh, that book sounds like something I will love. I'm going to have to read the first one in that series. Let me know if you read that and what you think. And I'm again, I very much know I'm probably pronouncing somebody's name wrong in that book. And I apologize if you know how to say it correctly, politely let me know in the comments below. So the next series that has a book coming out, the By the Sea Mystery series by Kathleen Bridge. The main character is Liz Holt. She is a worker at her family-owned inn in Melbourne Beach, Florida. The fifth book is called Buried by the Sea. It's right here. I read part of the first one in this series, and I feel like I needed to give it another chance. But the first time I read it, I was really overwhelmed with, in the first few chapters, I felt like, there were so many characters introduced and so much going on that it just felt overwhelming. And I particularly don't like that when I feel like you're just introducing these things to as filler as opposed to plot to further the plot. And I don't know if that's the case because I don't feel like I gave it, gave it enough of a chance. So I will be checking out the first one in this series again. And it has excellent covers. So in the fifth book, it says... At her family's hotel on a Florida barrier island, sleuthing novelist Liz Holt is shocked by hidden treasure and a buried body. Okay, the hidden treasure thing has me very interested. <laughs> a team of archaeologists is staying at the Indian Atlantic by the sea to study the days of the Spanish explorers, and they've stumbled upon a stunning and valuable find at the dig site. But before they can unearth it, one of the archaeologists finds himself buried in the sand and pierced with a diving spear tipped with poison. Okay. This sounds amazing. The local sheriff's department accuses the owner of the neighboring property, Liz's elderly reclusive friend and naturalist Birdman, of the crime. 
Liz is sure, well, pretty sure, that he is innocent and sets her sights on the remaining four archaeologists. With the help of her PI boyfriend and hotel resident, the two mischievous pet parrots, Liz must dig into the mystery of who buried the scientist and absconded with the artifacts he'd promised would put him on the in him in the Florida history books before she becomes history herself. Okay, again, I definitely need to give the first book another try because that one sounds amazing. It also says there's recipes included in this series, so that's fun too. I always love when there's recipes in books, which is funny because... I don't ever actually cook them, but if you try them, let me know if they're as delicious as they sound because they always sound absolutely delicious. The next series I want to talk about that has a book coming out is, it's just adorable. It is the Cookie House Mystery Series by Eve Calder. This is book number three, A Tale of Two Cookies. It's right here. The main character is Kate. She is a Manhattanite starting over as a baker's assistant in Coral K, Florida. So this one says, pastry chef Kate McGuire is loving life on the laid back island of Coral K, Florida. As a junior partner in a bakery renowned for luscious desserts, especially her cookies, life is pretty sweet. So when an old friend ar arrives and announces a spur of the moment beach wedding, that's just the icing on the wedding cake. But the groom vanishes right as a television crew descends on the town to film a hot new reality show. Is there a connection? Is her friend Desiree somehow involved? Or did groom Judson simply get cold feet? The bride and groom were paired better than warm cookies and cold milk, so Kate doesn't buy it. As the show's cast runs amok on the island and the investigation into Judson's disappearance heats up, Kate and her pal Maxie, along with town dog Oliver, will brave the rambunctious world of reality TV and a wedding weekend gone awry in an all-out effort to find the missing groom. That sounds really good, too. I don't watch reality TV, but I love the concept of the drama of reality TV. I just think that sounds really fun. I'm I'm going to have to read that one. Let me know if you like that series. The next series is called the Quaker Midwife series. It's by Edith Maxwell. Book number seven is coming out. It's called A Changing Light. It's right here. I have not read any of the books in this series, but I'm very intrigued by it. It is definitely on my TBR. A Quaker Midwife sounds like something I would really enjoy. And the main character is Rose. She's a Quaker midwife in Massachusetts in the late 1880s. In this book, it says, as the 19th century nears an end, midwife Rose can see signs of progress and change everywhere in her Amesbury community. Adding to the excitement is the annual spring opening when the town's world-famous carriage manufacturers throw open their doors to visitors from all over the globe. This year's festivities are tainted, however, when a representative from a prominent Canadian carriage company is murdered. Driven by her strong sense of justice, Rose is determined to track down the killer. She has only just begun her investigation when she learns that the plans for a radical new horseless carriage have gone missing. Faced with the question of whether the two crimes are connected and a list of suspects that includes some of Amesbury's own residents and any number of foreign visitors, Rose has to delve into a case with implications for the future, even if the motive for murder is one of mankind's oldest. Oh my gosh, that does sound super intriguing. Somebody let me know if they've read that because I might bump it up on my TBR. A Quaker Midwife, I've not read anything kind of like that. So the next series is one I'm super excited about. It's been on my TBR forever. And every time I read anything about it, I think I need to bump it up more and more and more because it just sounds so good. It is the Bookmobile Cat series by Lori Cass. Book number nine is coming out. It's called Checking Out Crime. It's right here. So the main character is Minnie. She's a bookmobile librarian, which sounds amazing to me. This also features her rescue cat, Eddie. The series takes place in Michigan. Minnie and her rescue cat, Eddie, can often be found out and about in their bookmobile near Chilson, Michigan, delivering great reads to grateful patrons all over the county. But they always break for trouble. And when Minnie sees a car speeding away down the road and soon comes upon a dead bicyclist, she assumes she just missed seeing a hit and run. Minnie is determined to discover who is behind the wheel, 
but it soon turns out that things are far more complicated than they seem, and there's more to this case than meets the eye. Wowzers, wowzers, wowzers. Again, I just bumped it up a little bit more on my TBR. <laughs> Every time I read it, I do that because it just sounds so entertaining. The next series is called the Paws and Claws series, another one that has been on my TBR forever, and I love this author. It's Krista Davis. She also writes the Domestic Diva series, which if you haven't read those, those are absolutely fabulous, so I'm sure this one is also great. Book number seven is called Big Little Spies. It's right here. The main character in this series is Holly. She is an employee of her family-owned inn that is an inn for owners and pets. This also features her Jack Russell Terrier. This series takes place in Virginia. The ladies at the Wagtail Animal Guardians, WAG for short, are in town for a pet adoption charity ball, and Holly is making sure to roll out the red carpet for her special guests. She and her furry best friend Trixie are busy keeping the WAG ladies happy and preparing for the ball when they learn that a retired judge has lost his prized pup. The venerable citizen has hired a pet detective who has some personal ties to Holly's new guests. His presence ruffles some feathers, and when the P.I. is found DOA not long before the ball, Holly wonders if one of the WAG ladies had a motive for murder. To make matters worse, some pet-loving guests of the ball nearly suffer the, the dead, same deadly fate. Holly and Trixie will have to sniff out the clues and leash a callous killer before they strike again. Oh my gosh. Like I said, I know that Krista Davis is an amazing writer, so I'm really excited about diving into that series. The next book that's coming out is one that I am so excited about. This is on my all-time favorite list of cozy series. You've heard me talk about it time and time again. I love this author. I love this series, everything about it. It is the Amish Candy Shop series, Book number six is coming out. It's called Lemon Drop Dead. It's right here. The main character is Bailey King. She is an assistant. So, so let me say that again. She was an assistant chocolatier in a prestigious place like shop in New York. And her grandparents, who are Amish, owned a candy shop in their hometown of Harvest, Ohio. And it's called Swissman's Sweets. And her grandfather at the beginning of the first book got sick. She went back to help him. She has now stayed. And here we are. Thank goodness. So this book says, although baby showers aren't an, Am aren't an Amish tradition, Bailey King wants to celebrate Emily Kimes' forthcoming bundle of joy. It's the least she can do for her hardworking assistant for at Swissman's Sweets, especially with Emily being estranged from her siblings. Everyone in Harvest, Ohio has gathered at the town gazebo, decked out in lemon-themed decor to add some of Emily's favorite flavor to the festivities, including, including Juliet Brooke, Jethro the Pig, and in a last-minute invite, Emily's sister, Esther. Oh my gosh, I love Juliet and Jethro. I'm so excited. But Esther isn't the only surprise guest. A mysterious Amish woman confronts Emily, claiming to know about her secret shame, the child she had as a teenager who was given up for adoption. The stranger vanishes before Bailey could find out what, who she was and if she knew what happened to Emily's first baby. Later that evening, the woman reappears, dead in Esh's family pretzels. Oh, no, 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 no. With a threatening letter by, written by Esther found on her body. Emily knows her sister is not a murderer and convinces Bailey to help clear Esther's name and put the squeeze on the real killer. Oh my gosh. I can't wait for this book to come out, y'all. If you have not, not read the Amish Candy Shop series by Amanda Flower, you are missing out. It, oh gosh. And she has a spinoff to that series, which has two books in it. It's the matchmaking series. It's also fantastic. Oh, gosh, I can't say enough about that series. You hear me go on about it. So I will, I will move on. So the next series is, it's one I've never even heard of, which is crazy because book number 15 says it's coming out in April. It is the Josiah Reynolds series by Abigail Keem. Book 15 is called Death by Shock. It's right here. It says the main character is Josiah Reynolds, who's a retired history professor and beekeeper in Kentucky. Interesting, interesting. I'm excited. So it says, Josiah is joined by Shanika and her sweet, innocent cousin Heather on an archaeological dig at Fort Boonesboro, 
where Daniel Boone led pioneers to the wild frontier. At Boonesboro, Josiah and Shanika meet the Dane twins, rich society women who just rub them the wrong way. However, Heather is entranced by the sisters. Having read about them in the society columns and financial pages, that it is until Heather catches one of them plotting to murder her identical twin. <laughs> but which twin is planning to murder the other? Heather can't tell them apart. She tells Josiah what she witnessed, hoping our intrepid sleuth will intervene. Josiah is unable to prevent the murder, but soon discovers Heather is neither sweet nor innocent and might have a motive for lying about the Dane sisters. Holy moly, I am interested in that. That, I just think that sounds super entertaining. The next series is the Garlic Farm series. Book number three is coming out. It's by Jen Jones. Here is the cover. It says, dreaming she'll someday return to her less pungent life of computer coding, Mabel continues to honor her deceased aunt's legacy by running Skinner Farm. To make ends meet between harvests, she's renting out the property's mercifully downwind lavender field for summer weddings. Mabel's first clients are retired age couple celebrating their second chance at love in their later years. Hosting a rehearsal dinner with fresh food seems like a good idea to promote the farm until the dead body of one of the wedding guests is discovered. Suddenly departed was the suddenly departed was the soon to be ex business partner of the groom, supposedly poisoned by goat cheese provided by Mabel's neighbor. Despite the tragedy and the scandal, the groom insists on keeping his wedding date. But with the adult children from the couple's previous marriages scheming to stop the new union, Mabel's farm is reeking with suspects. Wow. A garlic farm sounds super entertaining, and I have found myself loving books that take place on farms, whether it be like an orchard, a, a fruit orchard, or a farm. I'm just really digging those, so I'm going to have to check out that series. Before we go, I just thought I normally only do um, the the books that I see coming out on a few websites that I, that I use, but I have been finding some major like hidden gems and Audible Plus and Overdrive and all these things. So I kind of looked into some of these books that were coming out in April that I don't know if you walked in the Barnes & Noble you would see, but they are still definitely worth a go. I'm only going to give the names and titles and put up their covers because I believe Cozy Reads is going to do a whole video on some of these that she's been finding. So I'm going to leave it up to her. And I'm just going to, like I said, give a brief and, and put up the covers for you. So the first one, there is a book number two coming out in a series called The Haunted Mansion Mystery Series by Lucy Ness. Book two is called Phantoms and Felonies. It's right here. Book number three in a series called The Mary Jane Mary Jean Brown Series by Kate Young. It's called Southern Sass and a Battered Bride. It's right here. Book number four in a series called The Mystery of Old San Francisco by Nancy Harriman. The book is called No Darkness As Like Death. It's right here. The fifth book in the All Day Breakfast Cafe by Lena Gregory. The fifth book is called Whole Lotta Murder. <laughs> it's right here. The fifth book in a Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Mystery Series, that sounds really fun, by Dixie Lyle. It's called Perfectly Dead. I know I can't roll my R's, but I tried. <laughs> it's right here. Book number two in the Victorian Book Club Series by Callie Hutton. It's called The Sign of Death. It'll be right here. This series I actually really love, and I didn't even know it was still going, so I'm going to have to look and see where I am in the series. It is the Pennsylvania Dutch Mystery Series by Tamar Myers. The book is called Mean and Shellfish. <laughs> I like that book, <laughs> that title. It's right here. I actually love that series. The Tish and Terrigan Mystery Series by Amy Patricia Mead. Book number four is called Curse of the Cherry Pie. It's right here. Book number 13 
in the Maggie Thorson Mystery Series by Sandra Balzo. It's called Flat White. It's right here. I think that this has an amazing series title. It is called Two Broomsticks, Gas, and Grill, Witch Cozy Mystery Series. Two Broomsticks, Gas, and Grill, Witch Cozy Mystery Series. That just sounds amazing. Book number three is coming out. This is by Amanda Lee, Amanda M. Lee. It's called A Little Slice of Death. Here is the cover. See, don't these sound amazing? The next one is book number 13, again, in the Mitzi Moon Mystery Series by Trixie Silvertail. The book is called Dames and Deadly Games. I love that title. It's right here. And just the little blurb says, a murder mystery game, a terminal twist. Can this psychic sleuth swap coal for clues? Yeah. The next one is book number five in the Supernatural Speakeasy, which I thought sounded amazing. The author is Lily Harper Hart. The book is called Hex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. It's right here, and I think it has an amazing cover. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video and all, and you're excited about all the books coming out in April. I am. It's a super cozy mystery month. And until next time, may all your future reads be five stars. Bye, everyone.